Hey Crafty Family, it's me, and I am here today with you to show you something fun and don't look at my fingers because they're covered with black paint and I've got black paint under my nails and yes, all my nails are pretty much gone except my thumbs because for some reason, thumbs, they never fall off. If you get acrylic nails, they will be on your thumbs for a thousand years. Till the sun burns out, you will have your nails. I don't get it. I don't know why. But I figured now that I have A, not had the time, not felt good, kind of broke right now. I decided this is the first time in probably 10 years that I have not had nails, acrylic nails on my hands. And maybe it's a good idea for just a little while. I don't like being without them because when I clean houses, it makes it, um, my nails get even more damaged because of chemicals and water and stuff. But I'm going to give my nails like a couple weeks rest just because they were kind of damaged and I want them to grow out better. Anyway, that's not even why we're here. Why am I talking about that? So, today I discovered something before I even get involved in what I'm doing. Did you know that you can rip a cling stamp right clear in half just by pulling it off of the thing for the first time? Oh yeah, it's, it, 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 it can happen. Didn't know that. But I ripped this off to use it for the first time. And I plum ripped it right in half. Right? I mean, literally right in half. But I got some good news for you. If you are like me and you're rough with everything and, you know, you're an idiot and you grab onto your cling stamps and you just yank, like I do, um, and I'm probably the only one that does that, um, you, and you rip your stamp, just know that good old crazy glue, super glue, whatever, will fix it. Um, I don't know for how long, but it does seem to be pretty good. I'm pulling on it. It's good. It's ripped right down here in the center. It's fine. I stamped with it. It works. Just use your um, non-stick craft mat, a good non-stick craft mat, because if you use a non-stick craft mat, then you can lay it down, glue it, you know, put glue, put glue on the one side, put the two together, lay it nice and flat so that it stays flat back in its original position and then you know if you look real close you can see the seam where the glue is if you want to add a little reinforcement you can add just a bead of glue going down the back and let that sit just try not to get as much glue on the front part where you're stamping obviously I got a little bit but not much and I'll show you why it works and how I know it works because I stamped that of course it's not the full image because I didn't have a big enough space but I stamped that after I ripped it and then glued it back together so it's perfect there's you can't tell there's no line there's no nothing you cannot tell that that was ripped in half and put back together so there is a light at the end of the tunnel 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 I don't know what a tunnel is um, but there is a light at the end of the tunnel I did scream about 8,000 swear words when I ripped this because the only reason I bought this stamp set when I bought this stamp set was for this flower stamp. I wanted a nice big flower stamp. So I said, oh, I love that flower. And I used it for the first time today, ripped it off and ripped it in half. I was pretty much in tears, yelling, you know, words that begin with A and F and B and N and C and D and probably a few other C's and an M and an F and a, probably a Z, a Q, a Y, a K, a L, and an I. I don't know. I, I said things that I think were in Korean. I don't know. They were really bad because I was so upset that I ripped this stamp. But I'm just very happy it's back together. And I will let you know how long it lasts. So whatever today's date is, that's when it happened. The day that this falls apart from me using it and I have to glue it back together again or buy a new one at that point. I don't know if I'll be able to glue it twice. I will say, hey, today's the day that, that flower stamp just kind of went Pfft. so, but for now, it's working. Anyway, the reason why I used that stamp in the first place, the reason why I want to do this video. Okay, so this blob of looks like nothingness. This is rice paper, and what I did was I watercolored on rice paper, and I just did it in a blob. Basically, this is the rice paper. You could buy it in a roll. Something I didn't know, because this is different rice paper than I am used to. Um, the rice paper that I had used once before did not have some weird shiny coating on the back uh, or on the inside. I don't know. I, at that point, I didn't know what side I was supposed to draw or paint on because I didn't know if I was supposed to do it on the smoother side or the rougher side. So I did it on the rougher side. 
if you have any idea if you've ever used this kind of rice paper I think it you know I don't know are you supposed to do it on the smoother side or on the rough side I don't know so I did it on the rough side because it felt nice I don't know what the hell and the reason why I did this I used my cheap and cheap and cheap and cheap 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 watercolor paints these here and these are like a metallic watercolor and these are just plain and I just did some random color that's all I wanted and because it's watercolor paper and, and on the on the rough side you can't rub back and forth with the brush too much it starts to peel up and I've got some of that going on but luckily shortly into that I realized that the best way to do it would be to take your brush and if I could find a brush for an example let's just use one example if you just do this and tap it on then it doesn't beat up as much so and plus you can always just rub it off and it comes right off anyway so the reason why I did this let's get into that so after I played and just that's basically what it was I was just experimenting I was playing um, I decided that I wanted to use this because this rice paper is like double the thickness of tissue paper so it's really kind of thin and it's kind of cool and I just thought maybe it would be fun to use I gave I grabbed two of these like I did a video on these uh, art tiles. I think I did a video on these art tiles. Yeah, on these cardstock or chipboard art tiles. What I wanted to do was cover them with this just to add some color in spots. So I figured instead of painting them, this would be a kind of fun way to rip this paper up and throw it on there. I'm curious, however, if I put a dark stamped image, if I put some of this over it with the color, if the image will shine through. We're going to find out just because I think it'll be fun why not and what i'm going to use i'm actually going to use some gloss medium to find this out just because it's in front of me and i generally wouldn't use gloss medium to glue things but just for the sheer hell of it i'm going to put a couple drops down very little amount is all i need just a little bit right there and then i'm going to take it and i'm going to start ripping and I'm going to try one, and if it works, then I'll go back and stamp something on the other one. And then we could stamp a foreground image after that and have this be a background image. So I am just going to rip into this mofo. And let's see. See, I got a nice pretty image. And let's see. Tear some of it away. Basically, just do that. Move this over, and the brush might help. A soft brush might help. This brush will do just fine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cover this, and of course I used um, archival ink so that it would not move when I do this. And then I'm going to even put some on the back of this. going to lay it down and stretch it out and then I'm going to put some more over top and I know it's watercolor so it might run a little bit but I don't really care this was more for an experiment we're doing an experiment to see what what's going on go see what's what see if this does what I want it to do and it kind of does actually um, you can see through it now under some of the areas where I had the darker color watercolor it's harder to see so it's kind of a good thing to know now I'm just gonna real quick tuck the edges of the of this watercolor I mean the rice paper over the other side so it's nice and finished and you also want to be careful with this too like rubbing on the paper you want to just be you know careful you don't want to rub it too much you just want to do what you got to do, pretty much. And once you got it all fancy like, and wrapped all around and all that good stuff. Okay, so this is what we are left with. And you obviously can see the stamp nice through it exactly how I wanted so that's a really cool little technique you can use the rice paper and do that okay so now that we know that I'm going to pick another stamp 
my hands are so sticky. That's the one thing I don't like gel medium. It, it, it sticks and then like, it's not like Mod Podge. Mod Podge is easier to get off. Let's make it a baby wipe so that my fingers aren't like bothering me the whole time. So now that I can see through, I am going to pick another stomp. This time I will do my best not to rip it. And I really, let's see, I want to do maybe this chandelier and some scrolling or something would be cute. Or just the chandelier, I guess, could be an idea. Just something easy squeezy. And I don't know what I did with my ink. Oh, there it is. Huh. My thing lifted up with it. Well, I'll be. Okay. So we're going to plop some ink on there. And I'll probably just do this from an angle. Get off. Thank you. And I'll clean off my stamp. Okay, nice and clean. Now I could probably add a little bit of scrolling. It doesn't look like it should be too much trouble to do. Either that or... Mm, yeah, let's see. I got some scrolling. I got some scrolly doos. I can just add a little bit of scrolly doos. Like right here. And over here. And over here. Okay. See? And that's how that looks. Clean off my stamp. Put away the ink. Put that over there for now. I'm going to dry this for two seconds. One, one and a half, one and three quarters, two. Now that it's dry... I'm going to pick a piece of the rice paper, and this time I'm going to try to stick to, like, not purple colors, and, like, these, like, softer metallic colors. I wonder how they will do. Curious. Let's try it, shall we? Okay. Let's just grab a piece of this stuff. Um, who knows? That might be too dark, too, but whatever. And I'm going to just do a, maybe I should do over here. And I will save all the little scraps for other collaging. And I'll make more of these, likely, because they're fun. I was up all night making art tiles, going crazy, making all kinds of fun art tiles last night, which I didn't record, because they're the same things that you've seen me do, so there was no point, but I will show you, um, I have a pocket letter to show um, tomorrow or Monday, so when I do, I will be sure to um, show you the tiles that I made. They is cute. Now I'm not worried about if there's wrinkles. I mean, there's not wrinkles, really. But I wouldn't be worried about it if there was. Because, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to peel that back and add some more. That just wasn't enough for me. There we go. Ah, I ripped it. Screw it. Doesn't matter. It really doesn't. Because, like I said, there's going to be more to this. And if you rip it, you take a tiny little piece of what you did. Why did I run out of this gel medium already? You take a tiny little piece, you shove it there, and you go, boop, boop, boop. And when it's all done, you're not going to be able to tell that it's ripped. How amazing is that? It's like magic. I'm being really fast just because I don't didn't want this video to be 9,000 years long. I was trying to be polite. Now I just do need to get to bed at some point here. Being up all night playing means that now I'm going to sleep and it's going to be like 3 o'clock by the time I get my ass out of bed. Not cool. 
but when the creative bug hits, especially after the week I've had, that's one thing I've noticed. I had a very stressful week and I was having trouble being creative because I didn't feel good. I was stressed out and then yesterday I felt better and um, not only did I feel better, but I got a lot accomplished that was weighing on my mind to get done and it was like all of a sudden a free, like a whole weight of stuff lifted off of me and I felt creative for the first time and like really creative for the first time in a week where I just wanted to do stuff, you know? And so, well, that got me here. That's why I ended up saying, well, I'm gonna try to, you know, make something. I hate that there's some gel meat. This is why I don't like things like this because I don't know if I could put this back. And it makes me mad because no, I really can't. Well, is there something else that needs to be gel mediumed while I'm here? I'm trying to see. It's not very much, but, well, what I can do is, it's not very much at all, but I'll just take it and go back over this one. It can always use another coat. I don't like to waste. So that one will have some extra protection. Okay. So, now that that's done... I'm going to dry it, and uh, when I come back, we will stamp on top of it and turn it, and then, you know, make it into an art tile. So, see ya! Okay, so, hey, I'm back. Check it out. I made, um, let's see if I'm missing any. I made a few of the doohickeys, um, and it worked out really well. What I ended up doing is, um, you can't really see the stamp underneath of it after I gessoed it. You don't have to gesso it. Um, in other words, what I did was when I stamped it originally, like I showed a little bit ago, I then took some gesso and just lightly went over it and then stamped it again. So if you don't take the gesso to it or you water it down a lot more than I did, then you'll see the stamp through it. Um, I'm trying to see, there's not really, yeah, you can't really see the stamp through it. So I, I probably was a little overzealous on the gesso. Here's one that I didn't gesso and the color's a little more vibrant and you could see. So it was just an experiment to see how that would go with the um, rice paper, which I really liked. I think I loved that it was able to see through it. You were able to paint it. And like, you know, if you tried to take a piece of tissue paper and water paint it, that's going to be a disaster. So the rice paper was fantastic for that. I had a lot of fun doing it and I love how the colors show through and of course like I said I gessoed it so it's why it's so pale. Otherwise it would look like that. So that's the difference. Um, that's not gessoed, this is gessoed. Just to give it hints of color in the background. So I just was playing. Um, last night I made these. Um, I made a bunch of these little art tiles, don't mind my nails, I got black paint and all kinds of crap in my nails right now. Um, but yeah, I made a bunch of these. These are my, um, I like these tiles because they remind me of like, when I was a kid, I used to like paint random things that I would find, like jagged little rocks or like broken pieces of something and I'd paint, or not a kid, but like in my tw early 20s or teens or whatever if I was bored and I didn't have materials. So when I do my clay tiles, I kind of like, I do like a messy job around the outside so they kind of look like they're jaggedy or they're not perfect and I love that. Um, I don't want them to be perfect. These are not meant to be perfect. When I do my perfectly square ones or my, you know, other ones, then yes, then sometimes I'll do them that way. But I like them this way because it gives them a very organic feel and I love that. I just think they're so awesome when I do it like that. Um, to me, that's a lot of fun. And then I added, of course, some stickles, and then, of course, I topped it with, um, yeah, whatever it's called, glossy accents. And so, yeah, and that's what you get. So that was a lot of fun to do. And there's, what's funny is there's a, there's a layer of book, old vintage book page from, like, 1906 or something I put underneath. But, unfortunately, I probably layered way too much on top, so you can't see that. But you can see, if you look in the background the background stamp behind the foreground stamp and I love that and the colors in the back that you can see um, but I've done a videos on this before so not really that big of a deal um, so anyway yeah so what I'm gonna do with these suckers here is now I'm going to add some gems 
and stickles and I might even add a little bit more color on here with some ink I don't know I'm gonna add a few other little things to these um, maybe a few little stickers or something I don't know I'm gonna just play with these and yeah and when I'm done I will come back it might not be till tomorrow because it is late but I might sit and work on them a little bit more I might color the picture in on a couple of them like this lady maybe I'll you know feel like coloring that in maybe I'll color in one of the poodles because we all know I love my poodles so I don't know I'm gonna see I'm gonna sit here and play for a few minutes and then see what happens so I'll see you in a bit okay so we're back and it is a couple days later because um life happens you know and I didn't get a chance to finish them and really what happened was the um the glossy stuff that I put on top because I laid it on so thick on some of them, um, because I had different dimensional stuff on here that I was trying to go over, um, it took forever to dry. Because I didn't use glossy accents all the way. I used this, which is um, Delta Air Dry. This is an old bottle, so it was actually looked kind of yellow in the thing, but I thought that would look cool if it came up like yellowy, but it didn't. It, it still came through clear. Um, but it was an old bottle I got on clearance somewhere. I don't even know where. It's Delta Air Dry Permanamal Clear Gloss Glaze. It's great. It's just like Glossy Accents, a little bit thicker, too. So you get, like, a better settling. I don't know if that makes sense. Like, it seems to, you get more dimension with it. Um, it's, it's awesome. But, like, for instance, this one, I put... You know, they're still not completely dry, so they're slightly not clear all the way. They're slightly, like, cloudy still. Um, they will clear up completely. I can show you examples because I've used this stuff before and made these before in that last video that you've seen that I made. And it does come up, you know, perfectly clear and... You know, it's still a bit, a little flexible because this is a cardboard, so it's good, you know, that it's a little bit flexible. But yeah, so these are the art tiles that I made last time. I'll be adding these into that little box. But yeah, so this one's got like a lot of chunky glitter on it. It's like super chunky glitter, but I figured that would be cute. And that's how I did that one. And then of course I always do like the messy paint around the edges. This is how I like to do it. I just put my finger in there, which is why I have black in my fingers. I think I talk about my fingers in this video and other videos more than I do anything else. I think I just, I don't want anybody to say in the video, ew, your nails are gross. That's why I'm like paranoid of it because I'm an obsessive hand washer. Um, I have like an OCD with, you know, slightly with washing the hands. I wash my hands probably 50 times a day, but mostly that's because I clean houses for a living. So every time I clean a bathroom or anything, I wash my hands, I wash my hands, I wash my hands. Lots. And plus I get sick a lot, so I have to. Um, but anyway, so this one here came out cute. I just, um, the word fun I put um, in green glitter. And then on the camera here, I did the, the little lens in, in glitter this one here I put some rhinestones at the top this is that one that I didn't gesso over um, where I was talking about earlier and you could see the stamp the, the background stamp um, so that one uh, I put some gems up there so I like the way that came out and I like see the difference this is what I mean like that's why it's cool to do it both ways because if you're you know you can have it be a little bit darker or you can have it be a, a bit brighter and the words show up a little better you know or or your whatever your foreground stamp is will show up bit, a bit better if you you know gesso it a little bit with some watered down gesso you can still see some color you know so it's pretty cool either way. Then there's this bird cage where I just, again, added some stickles to it. The girl, I glittered her mirror, her headpiece, and then put some rhinestones for her necklace. And I think that's it. Actually, that's not it. I have some more, but I had to go back over. I ran out of this, which is fine because you actually can use glossy accents on top of it um, to you know finish up if you need to like let's say you started on one and you run out just use glossy accents to finish it it, it blends in the same it's fine um, and they're still drying because they were bigger 
they were like this size, the bigger ones. And I used like microbeads on the poodle and like some of it settled. So I was trying to fix it. So it, they're still drying. Those sometimes take a process, but they're going to be fine. So, but I just wanted to show you these. And then like this one um, here, I just did this word smile. And what I was going to do now is to finish it off with this one. You know, I mean, they're not meant, they're not, art tiles are supposed to be artsy they're not supposed to be like perfect you know um they're kind of just supposed to be whatever they're not you know they can be an embellishment or they can just be something you collect so i mean like i've got some wrinkles in it it's not perfect you know the 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 enamel or the glossy accents isn't all the way completely to the edge in a couple of spots i love that I think it looks cool. I, I love rough looking stuff for some reason. I just love it. So, and I like stuff that's perfect too. So whatever. This one didn't come out right. So I never even bothered wasting the enamel on it. I didn't like the way it came out. I may go back in and fix it and put more micro beads just to fill it up. I don't know and see if I can fix it, but I might just chuck it. I don't know. Either that or maybe try to get this off and then start over. That's an idea too, because I could probably pick all the microbeads off and fix it. I hate that I wasted that one, but you know, it happens sometimes. So what I'm gonna do is I got this tiny little lace and this is some of the lace that I, somebody had sent me and it's that vintagey lace. And what I'm gonna do on this one is, you know, I'm just gonna take a little bit of hot glue and go around this with lace. I thought that would be cute and it would automatically turn it shabby chic and make it, you know, something I can use in a pocket letter or in a like a, a shabby chic project or something. So let's see if that'll work out for us. And I will just do a little at a time. Whenever you're using hot glue, you don't ever want to use, um, you know, why am I doing that? I either did it backwards or something, but, um, I might, yeah, I let it dry. Let me peel that off and start over. <laughs> well, that's, that's the one thing about the hot glue is it's probably going to peel off of that. I just thought of that. So we might use something different. Duh. That should have came to my brain a lot faster than it did, but yeah, it's going to peel off. But what will work really well, and I've noticed is, and something else that I probably, a good idea to tell you about and I'm trying to find it right now um I forget what I do with things sometimes <laughs> I'm losing my mind um if you ever um wanted to put like some lace on a project a project that's like if you're gonna put lace on a project that you're gonna get wear and tear like a purse or something like that then obviously don't do this but if it's for an embellishment or a journal or something like that um you can use score tape actually and it works fantastically. Um, so I'm going to find some of my teeny tiny score tape and I am going to show you that. This is a good, a good opportunity for me to show you. This is a 1 8 score tape. This is a perfect opportunity for me to show you that because I did want to show you that in another video too. But so now I got this opportunity to do it. If I, it's a brand new one, so let's see if I could find it. Plus, this way you don't have to worry about it drying. It dries instantly. So I'm going to, and of course, score tape is clear. So um, it's and it's not you know dimensional at all. So when you um, peel the thing off, you won't even see it. So if you happen to just you know not you know go over it, you know like the lace doesn't cover it, you can. It's not going to be a big deal. See? You can't see it. So, and then you got a little play time to do what you got to do. So I was sitting here trying to figure out which end was the front. I think this end is the front. This little lace. And then all you got to do is... Actually, I wanted to do it back this way. I wanted to do it around. That's what I, I, I get confused on what I'm doing. And then, there you go. See? Like, it's it works out well. And 
and I could put some on the top, some on the bottom, and I'm pulling on it, and it's snug. So, I mean, like I said, it's not for, like, super heavy wear and tear, because if you were to really yank it, I'm sure it would come off. But this is for an embellishment. It's not going to get yanked. and You know, it's going to just sit. That's kind of the point of an embellishment. It's just a decoration. Um, so you wouldn't do this with anything that you're going to wear or wash or something like that. But this is a great way to do, um, you know, some embellishing. And you always, when you use score tape, you want to rub it after you put it down. You just want to burnish it real quick because that's what will help it stick down all the way so that you, when you peel it, you're not peeling up the actual score tape. And then we will take it and and then there's nothing to dry and it's on and it's good to go and you don't have to wait for anything to dry. I think it's brilliant. How cute. See, and I might go down with some pearls or something on the side or leave it like that. I think it's cute regardless. Adorable. So yeah, so you could do stuff like that to all your, you know, art tiles and make them, you know, shabby chic and do fun stuff. You know, you can use laces or ribbon also. Score tape, fantastic for laying down ribbon. Um, it's great for a lot of things like that. So play around. Yeah, see, like, this is really quite on there, so I'm not worried about that. I usually finish the back um, with black paint, but I'm just not going to because most of these I'm going to stick down or, you know, something. I I don't know. If, if I decide I'm going to give it to anybody, I might. But, I mean, really, if I gave this to you, let's say, are you really going to be like, oh, well, it's, you know, not finished. I, I don't fuss about things. I'm not picky enough to, you know, I just, I'm not picky. Um, so yeah, so that's it. These are the tiles that I used with the rice paper. I hope you guys go get yourself rice paper. A roll of it is not expensive. And like I said, if anybody could tell me a little bit about why the rice paper had a slightly smoother side on one side, if they've ever gotten that kind, I'm really curious. I have no idea why. And I'm really curious of why that is. Um, I'm just curious to know. So I hope you have fun playing and doing some tiles and such. Um, and make sure you do what you love and love what you do and be nice to people. And love you guys. I really appreciate you guys. And um, I'm just really happy to have gotten to talk to and communicate and hang out with you know, new people. It's so much fun. I love it. And you guys are awesome. And I love all your comments and I read every one of them. Oh, also, um, speaking of comments, I've seen some people post comments and I can't reply to them. The odds are the re the one of the reasons I know that this happens is a lot of people will go on YouTube to just look at videos and they will not sign up for YouTube because they think that the only reason to sign up for YouTube is if you're going to make videos, but that's not true. You can have a YouTube account and never put a video up. What it'll do is it makes it so people can reply to you if you comment on their videos and stuff. So it's good to have a YouTube account. So, you know, go ahead and sign up for one this way. If you, were, if you comment on my video and you're not getting a reply from me, that's probably why. Unless you have a setting in your YouTube um, settings that are weird. But I've heard a lot of people say, you know, uh, you know, this, that, or the other. And then I find out they don't have a, an account with YouTube. It's a free account. Um, so definitely it's worth taking a few minutes and signing up. This way, you know, you're able to communicate through YouTube with your fellow, you know, YouTubers. Because I like to comment on everybody's comment for the most part. Unless it's like, you know 
you know, something that just requires a thumbs up, you know, but most of the time I like to communicate, you know, I like to talk to you guys. I like to get to know you. And, and so if you're wondering why I haven't responded to you or something, it might not be, you know, because I'm ignoring you. <laughs> I likely will never do that. It's probably because I couldn't respond to you because it didn't give me the option to reply because you're not a YouTube account holder. So just thought I would throw that out there. Okay, guys. Have a great rest of your week. Bye.